got a few things growing in this tray. So I've got some coriander, so cilantro along here. I have the nasturtium orchid flame, the one that I got from Thompson & Morgan growing in here, and there's a few plants. And then down here I have a type of sweet pea. This one is Lady Salisbury. I grew that last year. It's a white uh, flower with a little tinge of purple around the edges. Now, it's the 1st of May today, and I think I speak for all of us in saying that it's a bit mad when it comes to seedlings. I've been trying to keep on top of it in the greenhouse. I've done some reorganization in there. I've put up some staging, so some shelving units to put my seedlings on. I'm gonna need a lot more, so I have some more staging to put up. But what I'm finding that I'm running out of are trays and pots. Now I've gone to the recycle center recently and I've picked up some for free, but I am loath to buy any more. I really would like to reduce the plastic that I use in the garden and I think a lot of people feel the same way. And so I decided that I'm going to learn how to make newspaper pots. And I think a lot of us are familiar with this, a, a little tool, it looks kind of like a dowel that you can wrap newspaper around and make pots. Now I don't have one of those and so I did a little bit of research and just today I have taught myself with the magic of YouTube how to make a couple of different styles of newspaper pots. And I'm gonna share with you today how to make those. And the fact that I learned today shows that if I can do it, you can do it too. I've just sewn this round pot with some experimental sunflowers. And Thompson and Morgan sent me quite a few experimental varieties of flowers and veg this week. I have no idea what the varieties are. They're potentially going to be in the 2020 seed catalog. And they just asked me to grow them and see what I thought. So I'll be interested to see what this sunflower and all the others look like. But while we're on the round pots, these are the easiest to make. Literally takes you no time at all. So let's start with that. All you'll need are jars. So glass jars, look for ones that are straight sided rather than tapered. It'll make it easier for the pot to come off of. And then you'll need a newspaper. So this is half of a spread and I've just cut it in half just down the center seam. And then you just fold it lengthways once, and this is to make the larger pot that I've shown you. Give it a good crease, just like that. And then take your pot, and the end that's like the bottom of the jar, have that at the top, and give yourself a good half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and just roll the newspaper up and over that jar, all the way to the end, super easy. And then once you have it like this, all you do is just scrunch the newspaper down into the jar. It's as easy as that. To get it off, you just need to pull that jar out and that's why you leave that little bit of space. So you've got that there. There's still quite a bit of paper on the inside so we're just going to squish that down. Just use the, the front of your fist. And voila, dead easy, isn't that? Making these square ones is a little bit more involved, takes a little bit longer time. The effect is quite nice and I can see them stacking together really easily. So there are pros and cons to each. This will take a bit more time and it has a little bit more of a learning curve, but you can create them in all different sizes and that is dependent on the paper size. I found quite a few tutorials and videos on this already, but what it comes down to is the size of your paper. So again, you wanna use newspaper and you have to cut it down in most cases. If your newspaper is the correct size, then you are lucky and you don't have to. But basically you need a sheet of newspaper that is twice as long as it is wide. So you have a ratio of one to two. So for example, this piece of paper is 11 inches by 22 inches. 
and it will give you this nearly three inch pot. Oh, hello, Louis. <laughs> if you use a slightly smaller size paper, so eight and a half by 17, you get this size pot. And if you use a really small piece of paper, so six inches by 12 inches, you'll get this little tiny one inch pot. And these could be quite great for sowing seeds directly into. So we have the paper in front of us. This is going to make the larger square pot. And I've just noticed that, that there's something for Portugal here. I have a video. We spent a month in Portugal. I loved it. Check that out if you're thinking about planning your holidays this year. So the first step, I'm just gonna fold this in half this way. And then I'm going to turn it, and fold it again this way. Next, we're gonna make a paper airplane. So bring this side to that center line, so that crease we've just made. And then repeat that on this side. And then we're going to take this edge up to here. So this is the loose edge. It's just gonna go here. And then we're gonna fold it up again. Once you get the hang of making these, you can do them really quickly. Now pop it over to the other side and that center line is here again. And we're just going to fold this over here. And we're gonna repeat that on this side. And then we're just gonna fold this edge up to the bottom of this band and then fold it up again. So now we basically, it looks the same on both sides now, but whereas that's attached on this side, the side's still flappy. So we're going to take this and tuck it inside here. And there's some corner flaps in there. Make sure to get this, uh, this flap here back behind those corner pieces. You can kind of stuff it in and then adjust afterwards. It really doesn't slide in easily it being newspaper and all. So just do it the best you can. Okay, so now both sides are firmly attached. So now we're going to take the pointy end and fold it down. Just fold it down to the top of that bit there and then flip this around and do the same thing. And then the last bit is we're gonna take this corner and put it over here. And this little bit that's a bit rounded, just gonna create a little crease there. Not the rest of it, don't flatten the rest, just that little crease right there. And then when you open it, keep an eye on where you made that crease. and then it will create a flat bottom. And there you have it. That's how to make a newspaper pot using an origami box style. You can do the exact same as I said with other sized pieces of paper to create smaller ones or you can just stick with the jar method and create loads of them in a much shorter time. And you could probably just all squish them together. It seems that initially that the square ones might be a little bit more sturdy, but these guys are quite well put together and that crumpled up piece of paper just down at the bottom really does give it extra reinforcement from the bottom, which you don't really have with these guys. Well, I hope that you found this useful. I think a lot of us have seen newspaper pots and might not necessarily know how to make them. And as I said, I literally learned this in about 30 minutes, less probably. It was just this one that took the longest for me to learn how to do. And as I said before, the trick is to making sure that your newspaper has that ratio of one to two, and then you'll come out with a perfectly square 
origami plant pot. In the next video, I'm going to show you a little bit more of what's behind me. So an update on the home garden. And I've been doing a lot of work back here and there's been work in the greenhouse, there's been work in the raised beds. Here on the patio, it's really starting to come on as a place to hang out and feel comfortable and an extension of the house, which is exactly what we wanted it to be. The tomatoes. I was supposed to put up a tomato video, but there has been a little bit of a crisis recently, so I'm not quite sure if they have been attacked by a fungus disease or whether it was just a touch of cold. So I have taken the leaves off that were affected, have potted them on, and I'm just waiting to see if they'll make it. And if they do make it, then they will be planted out into the greenhouse as soon as possible. And if not, it's plan B. More on that in a future video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time for a tour around the home garden.